Corla, I wish to provide members with an update on further allocations of COVID-19 support funding for the financial year 2020-21. Can I begin, uh, Cancorla, by offering an apology that the statement is slightly late uh, going into the pigeonholes, but as members will know, the executive met this morning and, and ran on to be on 12 o'clock. Uh, the COVID crisis has created a highly uncertain financial context, and we have not known what course the virus would take. We have not known what the health experts would recommend in response to the virus and we have not known how much money we would receive from Treasury. This uncertainty has made financial planning very difficult. The background to the allocations I am announcing today reflects that financial reality. Just over two weeks ago, Treasury provided a further £400 million to the Executive to support our response to COVID-19. I requested urgent proposals from Executive colleagues to use this funding to support businesses, public services and vulnerable people. Some members have questioned why this funding was not dispersed immediately. Had we as an executive allocated this funding immediately, we would not have been able to take into account the new restrictions agreed by the executive last week. It was my view that it was right to have a plan in place to take us to the new year before making these allocations. It has been argued that the financial package I am announcing today should have been made at the same time as the new restrictions were agreed last Thursday. Concorda, the first indication I had of the restrictions being proposed was that Thursday morning. The proposed restrictions were discussed by the executive throughout the day and agreed on Thursday night. It was only at that point that a financial package could be finalised, and my officials and officials in other departments have worked over the weekend to put this in place. Cancorla, COVID is, the first and fo- is first and foremost a global health crisis, but it has created a global economic crisis, and extensive support to businesses and workers has been provided to protect people's livelihoods. The extension of the current restrictions means there is a requirement to extend the current support measures. An additional £55 million has is, is been allocated to extend the localised restriction support scheme operated by my department, and this will be expanded to include non-essential retail and leisure and entertainment business, businesses required to close for two weeks. The Department for the Economy's COVID restrictions business support schemes will also be extended. I understand the frustrations of businesses with the speed at which payments are being made. It is important to understand that schemes that would usually be designed and implemented over many months are being turned around in days and many government departments have repurposed themselves to provide grant support. For example, land and property services within my own department is a rate collection agency. It has transformed itself into a grant-making agency and taken on new powers to do so. Similarly, the Department for the Communities has stepped up to deliver a scheme for social enterprise and charities. The Department for Infrastructure has done likewise for taxi drivers. Designating a department devising the scheme, checking applications and issuing payments takes time and we have a duty to minimise fraud and error. These grants are taking longer to issue than I would have hoped, but officials are working as fast as they can to process payments. Today, the Executive has agreed to provide a further £213 million of business support. The Executive provided a full year's rates holiday to sectors worst affected by the pandemic – retail, hospitality, tourism, leisure, childcare and airports. And I appreciate these sectors will continue to suffer stress into the next financial year. I fully understand this, and my department is considering options for how best to deliver further rates of relief. I am therefore today setting aside £150 million for this purpose while the work is completed as a matter of urgency. A £95 million high street voucher scheme will give people a prepaid card for use on the high street, which has been devastated by COVID. The Department for Economy are finalising the details of this scheme. £20 million has been provided for company directors, a group that has been excluded from previous support. £20 million has been allocated to extend this, year's, this financial year's 12-month rates holiday to manufacturing businesses. This will bring the sector into line with what has already been offered to hospitality, tourism, leisure and retail. £10.6 million has been allocated to what are known as wet pubs. And this, support, this will support approximately 1,000 licensed premises who are experiencing additional financial hardship as a result of the health protection regulations. Five million will top up the tourism and hospitality scheme, reflecting the extraordinary costs of some businesses forced to close. Four point one million pounds for bed and breakfasts aimed at approximately nine hundred and fifty three certified accommodation businesses that were excluded from previous support because they pay domestic rates rather than business rates. Three million pounds for the extension of the digital selling capability grants to help local businesses grow their online sales. These allocations are in addition to the £60 million previously provided for the Department Department for Economy-led COVID restrictions business scheme. 
The Department for Communities has been allocated £71.5 million. This will see £44.3 million to enable a one-off heating payment of £200 to disabled people on higher rate allowances and older people in receipt of pension credit. This recognises the additional cost imposed on these vulnerable groups by the COVID-19 pandemic. It also includes a further £10 million each uh, for, for support for councils and sport, £2.25 million for social enterprise support, which will allow the oversubscription to the social enterprise fund to be funded, and £5 million in respect of the charitable grants, which will ensure no charities are left unsupport, unsupported for the remainder of this financial year. The Department for Education has been allocated £20.6 million in relation to COVID response measures and £5.8 million in respect of COVID education restart measures. This includes vital funding to ensure families of young people who are entitled to free school meals will receive food grants during the school holidays. The Department for Infrastructure has been allocated £1.2 million from the £10 million set aside for support for airports to provide further support to the City of Derry Airport. The Department for Infrastructure has also been allocated £26.3 million in relation to lost income across the Department and its arms length bodies. Today's allocations totalled £338.1 million. There is also £150 million set aside for consideration of longer-term rate support. A further £26.6 million has been held in reserve. Previously centrally held allocations include £6 million for taxi, bus and coach, £8.8 million for airports and £60 million for Department for Economy-led schemes remain pending. I will continue to keep the Assembly informed of further funding for further measures as these are agreed. Cormilla Margaret. I call Paul Frew. Sorry. I call the chairperson. Steve Bacon. Your thank you very much indeed, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you very much indeed. And I do rise as the chairperson of the uh, finance committee. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting it that easy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And may I thank indeed the minister for meeting with me earlier today and briefing me in the contents of a statement before he came to this house, uh, Minister. Uh, I thank you indeed for your statement, and we welcome this much-needed funding as a means of supporting business. However, what these businesses need are these payments to be made without unnecessary delays. There are a number of businesses which are still awaiting payment payments from previous announcements. Therefore, it would be helpful if the Minister could outline what is being done to prioritise payments for those who are still waiting. Do, apl do applicable departments have sufficient capacity to ensure payments are progressed quickly? And we notice your comments about LPS and how quickly LPS has managed to repurpose itself. We also ask what commitments can the Minister give to assure those who are eligible for support, that are, who are eligible for support that payments will not be subject to undue delay. And further to the announcement on the issue of the respect of the £95 million in household voucher scheme, and I know this is, will provide a much needed boost to local businesses, but it would be helpful if the Minister could outline the rationale for outlining the scheme to every household particularly since many of the households will probably not need it, whether a targeted scheme offering a higher amount would have been a more sensible approach to support those most in need, whether any households are going to be excluded, and will there be an expiry date for vouchers, and what will happen to money from unspent vouchers. And just looking at the Department of Communities website, since there are 487,000 households in Northern Ireland, if this was approximately £100 each, this would equate to £48 million. So is it £200 rather than £100 to do that as well? But may I indeed thank the Minister for his statement. Thank you. Uh, I thank the, uh, the Chair for his, his comments and questions. Uh, of course, the, the, the balance has always been between getting payment on the ground as quickly as possible and ensuring that, I mean, it's not two, three weeks ago that we were having a debate in the Assembly about payments that had gone uh, awry. Uh, and the consequence of that, even though it was a very small proportion of the 10 and 25k grants that that happened to, but that does draw particular attention, and it, it puts, uh, it reminds us of the necessity of ensuring that public money uh, goes to where it is designed to go to, and it gets to those most in need. So it is that balance between getting payments out quickly. Uh, it's also the more f more focused, if you like, the more selective a payment is, the more data is required to isolate 
that away from other broader groups uh, to make sure it gets to the right person. And that means that data is not just the LPS data, but can be other data that is required to verify that people are in certain businesses that are entitled to receive support. So the, the more focused, I suppose, in terms of the restriction from the Department of Health, that adds complexities in terms of the paying out of the schemes. And we don't know what the Department of Health restrictions are until they arrive with us. Uh, and that the executive agrees them. Uh, but that ha having said that, uh, we want to see the schemes get out as quickly as possible. I, I think they have been slower than I would have liked, uh, and certainly than the executive would have liked, and I'm sure all uh, MLAs. Uh, and we, we will continue to encourage that. I know certainly in relation to the support scheme that the LPS are rolling out, that has gathered pace, it has started to pay. Uh, it, it was well through those payments last Friday when I got the last figures, but obviously we've been working on this over the weekend, and I, I will get up to date figures, I'm sure, before question time tomorrow, uh, so we can advise members where that's at. In relation to the voucher scheme, it's obviously been operated by the Department for the Economy. Uh, and they will, I'm sure, expand on the detail as time goes on. But it is not meant to support households, it's meant to stimulate the high street. So the purpose of it, the primary focus of it, is to stimulate spending, to, to stimulate growth uh, on the high street, and to give certainty to business. It is likely to roll out, I'm told, in the new year, uh, because it takes about six weeks for such a scheme to be put in place. So it's really uh, for that. It is, I, I, I believe you're correct, it's about £200 per household. Uh, and it's intended to be spent out in the, the months, perhaps, when, when the high street's at its leanest in January, February. And it's really about a, a stimulus to the high street spend rather than a support to the household. I call Paul Frey. Speaker, uh, Mr Minister, what use is this statement to this House when it is completely devoid of any realism and completely disconnected from the real world? What use is this statement to the mother, single mother of three who runs a hairdressing salon who has not received one penny of support from you, Minister. How much money did the Department of Economy ask for, bid for, and what percentage have they received of that bid? Well, can I say that the, the, the scheme is designed to pay out uh, the, the, the sort of person that you reflect that owns a hairdressing salon? Uh, should be uh, getting money, if, if not already, should be getting money in the near, very near future from LPS. Well, perhaps he could take that matter up with LPS rather than grandstanding it here in the chamber, uh, as most other MLAs are doing, taking up individual cases and pressing that for uh, people. Uh, and this, I mean, to say that an allocation of, when you add in the intent that I have, have for rates uh, holidays continued into the new financial year, of almost half a billion is not in the real world. Well, it's all of the, the money that the executive has at its disposal, very largely all that we have at our disposal to provide support. That's what we're doing. I understand the battles that are going on within your party. It's not only affecting your party, it's affecting the entire running of the executive, that dysfunctionality. But we're trying to manage as best we can to get all of these schemes done, to get Order. support on the ground where it's needed, to get executive decisions taken, and not only taken, but supported by executive ministers. And that's all a challenge, but we will meet it regardless of what goes on within your own particular party. I call Melissa McHugh. Minister, um, unlike the previous speaker, uh, I think that uh, I welcome and many other people too will welcome uh, the support measures that you just have announced and I can only but sort of appreciate too the time constraints that you would have been subjected to in every way and drawn up these proposals and so on. Now, uh, apart from the rich um, uh, extension re relief uh, and um, uh, the £5 million, pound, which will actually be allocated to tourism and hospitality schemes. Could I ask you, Minister, will travel agents in particular uh, be able to expect any further funding in the future? Well, it's, it's, it's perhaps not a case of further funding. It's a case of getting uh, some support to them. Uh, and I know that they've been particularly badly hit. Not only have they lost business, but deposits they would have been paid have to be paid back so they've actually been paying out money to some of their customers and I did a meeting just a few short weeks ago with the first and deputy first minister and we met representatives from their group uh, and it was, it was agreed that the, they would provide further information on their specific request in terms of what they wanted to see in terms of support from the executive. Uh, my own officials have been engaging with them uh, to provide them with some guidance and collating that information and once that has been put together it will be provided to the responsible department to make sure that we can uh, include them in some support and I'm very keen to give them support if we can. Call Matthew O'Toole. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to the Minister for coming and giving us this statement today. Um, certainly many of the measures are welcome, critical for many of the, the people who are um, uh, in extreme distress uh, financially and in many ways emotionally as we head into Christmas. Small business owners and the people who they employ is getting this money out the door. I appreciate it's the job of the Economy Department, um, who have, I'm afraid, not been uh, very fast at, at, at getting this support. What assurances has he had from the Economy Department that particularly support aimed at some of these businesses will be, um, uh, will be got out before Christmas so that people can spend it on, uh, on some kind of Christmas for their families? That's absolutely essential. And secondly, can I ask, on the $95 million for High Street vouchers. People will want to understand more detail about that allocation. Also, whether there is any degree of prioritisation for small independent retail over some of the large multinationals, which do, of course, have online operations, some of which um, uh, the business has transferred to that. So, could I have clarity on those two things? When the money will be got out the door, and whether the 95 million has any uh, differentiation between independent and uh, large-scale retail? Well, of course, we want to get the, the money out the door as quickly as possible. And, and can I say, I have encouraged other departments to do that, not just the Department of the Economy, but other ministers who are making allocations as well. Uh, it is that balance between trying to find verification and uh, information to support the application for funding, but also trying to ensure that the, the money goes out quickly. And I, I would also encourage people who are applying to try and make sure that the details that they are given are correct, that they are what is required, and that they check in case there is return requests for, for details. Quite often people miss emails back to say, could you provide additional information? So people need to keep a watch of that uh, as well to try and assist in getting the money out quickly. And of course, we want to see that happen as quickly as possible. The, the scheme he refers to, the, the voucher scheme, I, I think some of the detail of that will have to be expanded on by the Department for the Economy uh, in relation to how that is intended to operate. Uh, and I do uh, uh, appreciate what he's saying in terms of the online presence favouring uh, some of the much bigger businesses. That's why there's a three million fund in this as well, to assist local businesses to get more of an online presence so they can avail of that as well. It's not just left to, to the, the big multinational companies. As well. uh, but in terms of the target and that as to where it can be spent, that's something the Department of the Economy will have to respond to. I call Andre Muir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement. Uh, I do welcome the action that has been taken to help some who are considered to be excluded, such as uh, company directors in bed and breakfast. Will the Minister confirm that the £26.2 million held in reserve will be considered for those who are still excluded, such as the newly self employed? And also, will the Minister consider allocating additional staff resources to ensure that these grant payments are made on time? We need resources there to ensure that these payments are made out to businesses. Thank you. Well, the, the, the scheme in, in relation to that £20 million scheme does include uh, it's additional to the £10 million for the self-employed scheme, which the Department of the Economy has already announced, so those things should be addressed. We are trying to provide additional I know in my own department, LPS is a very specialised role. Uh, and you can't just put people into rate collection uh, uh, from, from other se sections of the department. But we are trying to give them assistance in terms of communication and answering questions and, and getting advice out to people. Uh, and I would hope that in other departments where you know, speed is of the essence and getting support out on the ground, that they do provide additional resources to the teams that are working on it. Before I move into the second round, I call the next members to remind people that uh, they shouldn't be asking multiple series of questions because you're eating up very valuable time of other members who also want to get in to ask a question of the Minister. So I call Christopher Stafford. This is becoming a pattern, Mr. Speaker. The last time the House was warned, it was me that was called. Show leadership. <laughs> Could I ask the Minister, I've seen in the annex that the figure given for the Department for the Economy's allocations is £137.7 million. My colleague from North Antrim, Mr Frew, asked a question that wasn't answered. Can I ask the Minister, what was the total requested amount from the Department for the Economy? Well, I think the total request was in the region of £390 million in, in roughly that, and I stand to be correct, and if that figure is incorrect, I'll supply him with it. Of course, that, that figure also includes £60 million, which the Department of the Economy are, are on top of the figure you have mentioned. There is an additional £60 million which the Department of the Economy are holding. And bear in mind, we are paying out into business, so there is an additional £55 million, which totals £90 million, which the Department of Finance are paying directly to businesses. So it is not just about economy are the only people paying out to business. The Department of Finance are paying about £90 million in terms of the business support schemes we are doing, plus the £150 million that we have set aside and we are working closely with Treasury over the weekend and hope to conclude very quickly will provide rates holiday into the next financial year. So that's also business support. So it's not simply a matter of one department 
solely having the responsibility for business support. A sizable proportion of that business support comes from the Department of Finance as well. Of course, not all bids can be met, and what we need to ensure in terms of meeting COVID bids is that they are spent out in this financial year. So while departments are coming forward with a range of options, we have to be certain that they can be spent, because the last thing we want is handing money back at the end of the financial year. So that was the balance, and the executive agreed to today. <coughs> And I thank the Minister for her statement. Um, some very welcome measures have been announced here today. Um, Minister, how do you intend to use the £150 million set aside for rates relief in the next financial year? Well, as I, as I said in, in response to the previous question, the, one of the key issues that businesses have been pressing with, and we've done lots of engagements with business over the last uh, weeks and months, uh, is particularly those who availed of the year-long rates holiday for this financial year was how beneficial that was to businesses uh, and ensuring those bills were not an additional cost in a very, very challenging time. And some degree of certainty in relation to the new financial year uh, and some early indication of that certainty. So we've been trying to work on that and what my intention is to do with that 150 million is to signal a further six month year or six months rates holiday for those businesses that have yielded the full year rates holiday in this financial year. And uh, we're currently working that through with Treasury and I hope you'll be able to confirm that very soon. I call Gary Middleton. Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his statement? I uh, particularly welcome the initiatives brought forward by the Economy Minister, particularly the 95 million uh, High Street voucher scheme. I think that will be a great boost to our High Street. In saying that, the Minister will be aware that that does fall significantly short of what was requested. Uh, when the details are confirmed for this scheme, will the Minister consider uh, fully uh, funding uh, the request that was brought forward to ensure that we can recover as we come out, come out of this pandemic? Well, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's not a question. It's a question of getting the right balance of package. And what we're doing is support for pay, uh, businesses that have been closing down. Uh, the Department of Finance actually pick up the lion's share of that support uh, because we're providing the scheme to all the premises. The Department of Economy, part of that is, is much smaller. It is uh, rate support going on into the new financial year, which is important to business. And the high street stimulus scheme, the voucher scheme that he refers to. And of course, if we had more money and if we do get more money, we can consider additional allocations to any of these schemes. But uh, it is a matter of trying to get that balance across the whole range of packages. Um, I very much welcome the Minister's statement today and what we need to see now is every department getting their finger out and making sure that these payments get out to people who are waiting on them and still waiting on and still waiting on um, support that was promised to them. Minister Thank you, thank you, Chair. Minister, B&Bs that paid domestic rates were part of what's now been uh, termed as the excluded group. Um, why were they excluded before, and uh, what uh, support can they expect uh, in the package that you've brought forward today? Well, they, as you're correct, B&Bs that I think of six bedrooms or less uh, are, are classified as domestic properties, and therefore they, they didn't, weren't able to avail of the previous schemes to support the 10K and the 25K grants. Uh, when we spoke to them as part of that group, uh, who are excluded in a range of, of, of various issues, they, they said that they could be identified, if you like, through the Tourism Board information that is held in relation to the cert certifying that the Tourism Board do of them. And so we were able to get that data and include them in the current scheme. So they're currently being paid out in terms of the restrictions. Uh, but we also recognise that they had missed out previously. So I think it was something like 4.1 million or 4.6 million uh, has been put into this uh, scheme for them to assist uh, with the previous payment that they missed out on. Um, Minister, thanks for your statement. Um, it's been very detailed, and I believe that that will go some way in order to take some of that stress and the heat that which is in our business community out there. Minister, I'm looking at um, uh, the wet pubs and I see that you've allocated uh, 10.6 million to them. Uh, that's very welcome. I hope and trust that this will be rolled out as quickly as possible. But I'm sure the Minister is also aware that there is the public houses which have a rateable valuation of £50,000 and above. Is that in that or is there a specific package going to try to help those businesses? Thank you, Minister. Well, I, 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 
the, the, as I say, the, the scheme in relation to wet pubs is, is very welcome. It's one that I had been pressing uh, for for some time because I recognise that quite a few of those, in some cases I know in my own village, uh, didn't actually open up in time and then were closed again. Uh, but some of them vir virtually could only open for a number of weeks before they, and they effectively been closed down since, since March. So I think that scheme is very welcome. And it should be, there should be a very clear list of who they are and how to get them, and I would hope that that can be delivered very quickly to them. The, the 10 point, I think it's 10.6 million tourism scheme initiative is aimed at those properties and businesses over the 51,000 NAV that missed out on the 25k grants. So of course it would be a matter for the Department of Economy how they allocate that, but that's intended to meet those premises. Call Mag Nesbitt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm grateful for the Minister's assessment of what more might be done for businesses that are falling through the cracks. Um, I was contacted by one this morning uh, who missed out on the small business support scheme because they, they didn't have a rates ID. But the reason they didn't have a rates ID is because it's a new business and they couldn't get an assessment of rates in time. So would the minister consider some sort of committee that might act as an appeals body and look at specific and exceptional circumstances like that? Well, I know that uh, the LPS have been trying to, I mean, the, the, the process data has been to try and pay out all those who have great certainty around to get the payments out very quickly and then deal with all of the ones who either have submitted incorrect information or there's a question over that. Uh, and so they have been trying to be flexible. I know in the 10K schemes, they were trying to be very flexible with people uh, who were in the process of getting valuations done and assessments done to allow uh, space for that to happen. So if the, if the member sends me in details or into the department, I'll try and ensure that there's a follow-up on that because I, I do know that they do come back to all of those people who have missed out in, in terms of the LPS schemes and try and work with them and work through them to see can they get them out of the scheme. Call Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement. And I think we all really do share the pain for those businesses, small or large, that are feeling the impact of COVID at this time. In relation to the seven bids, which I understand were submitted by the Minister for Economy, as detailed on page five of your statement, uh, £20 million has been allocated to manufacturing, which is very welcome. And indeed, uh, I understand that will come on top of the business relief. Will that run through until the new financial year, beginning April 21? Yes, the short answer is yes. It is to make up. There was a case specifically made, and that's another grant that, that comes out of the Department of Finance because we manage the rate system, uh, even though it's, it's an economy support, uh, as in the, the broad economy, not the department. So, yes, it will. it's intended to allow them the same rates holiday that other businesses had up to the end of the financial year. Call Keeve Archibald. And I thank the Minister for his statement and I think the, the point that you made to Mr Muir about the allocation of resources is an important one. There has been some lag time between the allocation of funds by yourself as Finance Minister to schemes actually being opened and delivered out by, for example, the, the Economy Minister. So I think that it is important that resources are put in place to ensure that happens as quickly as possible. Can I ask the Minister, in relation to the £20 million that has been allocated for company directors, is that in addition to previous announcements and allocations to the Department for Economy? For example, the newly self-employed, Graham Elgott. Yes, it is. It's in addition to the ten million that was uh, previously given them for the new, newly self-employed. Kelly Armstrong. Mr Speaker, and thank you very much, Minister, for your statement so far. Um, Minister, the devil is in the detail, and I know that there's a lot of information in, you, in your statement today. Um, I'm particularly interested in the Department of Communities allocations, where it talks about one-off heating payment of £200 to disabled people on higher rate allowances and older people in receipt of pension credit. Um, I'm sure that the detail will come, but do you know at this stage if that's a, if that's a payment per person or per household, because we have many elderly carers um, who have not received an additional payment of carers allowance throughout this whole pandemic. And it would be interesting to see if this, at long last, is going to be two payments in one household as opposed to just one. Uh, I, I haven't got that level of detail as to whether it's a household or a person. Uh, it's uh, obviously intended because people, particularly with the pandemic, would be spending much longer periods of time at home over the winter period and obviously then running up heating costs. And uh, the community minister has brought forward a proposal to help this group with their heating bills, and I obviously was very happy to support that, and the executive were happy to support that as well. Uh, my understanding is the payment will be made in January when the support is needed most, so uh, I'm assuming that the detail in terms of who would be eligible will be uh, brought forward before that period. Paul, I call Paul Gibbon. 
Mr. Speaker, when I look at the allocations to departments, communities, economy, education, finance, all requests to give money out to support people, and then I look at the Department for Infrastructure, which is an allocation to shore up a failing department by the SDLP, who need to focus, Finance Minister, on delivering for taxi drivers, getting people tested. Instead, they pontificate and lecture about others Order, when they are failing to run a department. In, in respect of how we are going to move forward and get this money out, Order, his, members. his colleague rebuked uh, himself about the need for the Department of Finance to pull its finger out and get the money. Will he ensure his department gets land and property to get this money out? How many allocations are waiting to be processed? And will he give the two thirds to the finance minister or to the economy minister who is fighting for businesses? Order, members. Minister. Well, I am not sure where you get the executives after collectively allocating about a half, a million, half a billion pounds, the lion's share of which is to support businesses across a range of departments, and that you suggest then that only the economy minister is fighting for business. I mean, it's a nonsense, uh, and you should understand that. I know you're up making your political points. The Department for Infrastructure bids were met in full. I'm encouraging the infrastructure minister to get the schemes that she's paying out out the door, as I am with the economy minister and with other ministers, as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, and I think, uh, of course, the, the additional payments that we have offered up today are, are very, very welcome. And they, when they are hitting the ground and when the people out there who are suffering as a consequence of the pandemic are feeling the benefit from, then we will all uh, find it a much happier place for us. But to be quite honest, I'm not interested in the side swipes and the arguments. I'm interested in getting these schemes effectively out on the ground. I call Karen Mullen. Quarter, and I also thank the Minister for his statement. I particularly welcome the free school meal payment um, that will go out uh, across for all school holidays. Um, and I want to commend all those who have worked and lobbied on this issue for many, many years. Minister, can, I confirm, can you confirm for us the period that the free school meal payment um, will cover until? Well, this, uh, the money that we are allocating is COVID. Money, so it has to be spent in this financial year. So the free school contribution that I have made in relation to this, it, it takes you up to the end of the financial year. Of course, the education minister brought a paper last Thursday, which he got support from the executive for a continuation of free school meals uh, on to the end of the mandate, uh, which I think is very welcome. And obviously, when we now are working out the budgets for the differ different departments, we'll have to work with education to meet the budget, as the executive have agreed that we want to do that until the end of the mandate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and thank you, Minister, for uh, your statement and coming to the House today. I appreciate your acknowledgement um, of the delays in getting payment out, but the delays have really very serious consequences. I got an email from a constituent this morning, and she says, I've applied for two grants. First, from our pre uh, premises in the city centre, and another one from outs in the outskirts of the city. Um, she has received emails to say that um, payments would be uh, on their way, and she has received absolutely nothing, and that's seven weeks. So it's not just by a few days, it's weeks that these um, have not been honoured. She is saying our landlords are putting us under immense pressure to get a payment to them. Our action will be started. This is quite worrying. We have maintenance to be carried out, and the money simply the isn't there to facilitate please? it. Uh, we have been in business for 15 years, and I am considering closing my salons in January in the city centre. Minister, what are you doing to ensure that your department speeds up this process and gets the money into this constituent's uh, bank account as soon as physically possible? Well, what we are doing is uh, encouraging uh, the LPS to act as quickly as possible. The data that they needed to have to assess whether uh, close contact services uh, was not possessed by them alone. A lot of it was possessed by Council Environmental Health Site, and so they had to get data transfer and match-ups, and that's what caused the delay in the initial phase. You also need to make sure, as I've said, that the person, I'm not suggesting this is the case, but in general terms, if anyone comes back to say they haven't received, that the information is correct, that it's in, that they have responded to further requests for information, because that sometimes can hold up the payment. But of course, we recognise absolutely that people uh, are suffering on the ground. They want to see payments as quickly as possible, and that's what we want to see as well. I call Justin McNulty. I can thank the Minister for coming before the House today and for his, statement thus, for his answers thus far. 
Minister, I asked you a question in terms of the number of payments made to, to applicants over the first four weeks of the restrictions. Um, as of the 13th of November, there were 3,418 payments made out of 11,589 applicants. That's less than 30 per cent. Given that so many of the payments have been made in the first tranche of the, the first four weeks of the restrictions, what confidence can you give to businesses that, that the payments will be made this week, Minister? The businesses cannot wait. We have a Christmas tree erected out here in the lobby in the foyer, but I am not feeling much cheer, and the people in the, the businesses in our constituency are not feeling much cheer, Minister. Okay, well, I, I don't have today's up to date figures because I'm too busy trying to distribute half a billion pounds right across uh, economic and community support over the weekend, but I will get the up to date figures for tomorrow question time. But the last up to date figures I had at the weekend were showing a significant increase on that figure that you quote from over a week ago. Call Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement this afternoon. While you'll be aware of businesses that have not received support payments weeks after they were promised, the Minister will also be aware that some have fallen through the gaps, who have been unable to trade since March, have received no financial help from the Executive. So what discussions has the Minister had with the Minister for the Economy to make sure that there are no gaps and people that run these businesses get the financial support they need, and do these new allocations fill those gaps? Well, what I've said repeatedly at executive meetings over the last while is that we have a particular, uh, I suppose, urgency in ensuring that people you refer to have received no support get support, because we're now into our second and third round of support for some businesses. And while that support is clearly vitally needed, it's, it's grossly unfair on those who haven't uh, received that. I have met people from different sectors that aren't responsible in my department, but to try and offer assistance, to steer them in the right place, to get support, to offer officials to assist them, to gather up the right information so they can take it to the relevant department uh, to present, to try and get support. So I'm very keen to get support. I'm very, uh, uh, very acutely aware that as we roll out further levels of support for other businesses, some people have still not to get it. So I would encourage those people to contact the relevant departments, to make their case, and uh, if they need assistance, uh, I have always offered up to meet people, to, to steer them in the right direction and to encourage them and tell them the type of information they need to present to make a case for themselves. Call Jim Allister. Could I seek some clarification from the Minister? The £338 million that is announced today, is that all Barnet consequential money from the Treasury, or is it supplemented at all by any savings that the Executive has made in various departments? Uh, and more specifically, what about Belfast International Airport? This is our primary airport. It's now closed a number of days each week. I see here 1.2 million again for City of Derry Airport, which must be about the most oversubsidised airport we have. Uh, and, but what about Belfast International? Where's the money for it? Well, can I say this is Barnet consequential money. Uh, the, uh, what we did use the October monitor round, which were savings uh, to try and allocate to departmental pressures to kind of keep it's separate from the, these allocations. So this money we're talking about today is all Barnet consequences. Of course, there will be, uh, I anticipate, for the surrenders of money in January, in the January round, and that, that will be used to meet some departmental pressures uh, as well. The, the airports, I intend to bring next week a paper to the executive in relation to airport funding. And the member may, may know that when we made a previous payment in relation to airports, at that stage, International didn't require any assistance from us. Uh, it's very clear now they do, and we're working through that with them. The payment he refers to for City of Derry Airport is an outstanding payment. It's not, it's not one which was made new as part of this allocation. It's an outstanding payment, which is coming from money that was held in reserve for the airports. It's been sitting in reserve for some time. So there, is, uh, there was £10 million sitting in reserve for the airports, uh, and I hope by next week to be able to uh, identify uh, whichever department is to pay that out, probably infrastructure, uh, but to work that through with both Belfast International City and City of Derry as well. Thank you. Jerry Carl. The Minister just stated, and I quote, we have not known what course the virus would take. We have not known what the health expert would recommend in response to the virus. I repeat, we have not known what the health experts would rec recommend in response to this virus. And what they ask the Minister, if he can seriously handle that statement, known full well, as an island we saw this virus spread across other parts of the world, and that his executive was warned uh, by health experts that open, reopening the economy up too soon would risk a uh, second surge. Is the Minister seriously suggesting, sure, we didn't know what would happen, not our fault, nothing to see here, move on? Does the Minister think that's acceptable? Well, I, I'll give the 
member the benefit of the doubt and say he actually misunderstands what I said rather than deliberately misrepresents what I was saying. Uh, but quite clearly, the criticisms I was referring to in that statement, if he went on to quote the rest of it, was about people saying we should have had a financial package ready to go with the restriction announcements last Thursday. And what I was saying to him is we did not know to Thursday morning, half 11 on Wednesday night, but for me, who goes to sleep at that time, Thursday morning, we did not know what the health experts were recommending in terms of non-essential retail. We weren't aware of it, so we could not have brought a financial package to the executive on Thursday for agreement. Uh, so, I, I, as I say, I give you the benefit of the doubt you misunderstood that, but that's what I was referring to, not the global effect of the pandemic. And that concludes questions on the statement. And, uh, sorry? Mr. O'Toole, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can you advise whether it's in order for the member for...